Strength Training and Muscle Building. I'm Dr. Greg Ellis. I've been lifting weights for a long, long time. Since I was about eight, when I started pulling a set of springs. There's not much I haven't done in the world of weights and exercise. I opened one of the first Nautilus centers in the country in 1972, and we did all kinds of crazy things back then with those machines and different training programs. And I wrote a book called Spectrum Training, in which I describe all aspects of exercise and how they affect the muscles. But I'm mostly interested in muscle building and strength training today. And I want to talk to you about the best ways to do that. You have to understand that your muscle is composed of different fibers, and these fibers have different functions. They're innervated or excited by different nerves, and they do different things, and they have the ability to create a lot of force. So, for example, type 2 white fibers can create a lot of force, a lot of tension output. And red fibers, or type 1 fibers, they're involved in less strenuous activities, say a marathon or something of that nature, because they are primarily designed to process oxygen and make their energy that way. They're not forceful fibers. We don't use them in forceful muscle contractions. The best way to build muscle size is to stimulate the type 2 or white muscle fibers because they can really grow, whereas the red fibers don't. So that's why you don't see big marathoners, and that's why you do see big sprinters because of the contractile forces, the tension output that the muscles required to go through is what causes that muscle to grow. Now, in weight training, most of us work, work off of what I call the fatigue model. We'll pick an exercise, let's say the bench press, and we'll do two or three sets of 10 repetitions each. And then when we can do the 10 with more ease, we raise the weight and we try and get stronger. You keep trying to push the window. Now, you do have an upper limit. I was at my upper limit when I was 22. And that's, that's it. You, you just can't push beyond that. Now, steroids will help you go beyond that. And I did that too when I was out in Gold's Gym in California in 1971 when Schwarzenegger had just come over from Germany. So we were all doing it. That was just part of the deal. They weren't illegal then. And I even was getting a prescription from my own family doctor back when I was playing football at the University of Pittsburgh. So we all did it, but we trained, and then a big thing came out in the 1960s called isometrics. Now, one of my professors at Temple was a specialist in isometrics, so I did gather all the research papers on that, and I built a rack in my mother's garage where I could do isometric-type exercises. Well, recently, just a couple years ago, I got involved with seniors, and a buddy of mine had a health club. It wasn't his, it was owned by Bob Carpenter down in Delaware, the former uh, son of the owner of the Philadelphia Phillies. Big club, 120,000 square feet. So I introduced them all to vibration exercise, and the, the leader in vibration exercise today is a company called Power Plate. So you might want to look that up. Vibration is extraordinarily powerful. And it's going to make a tremendous contribution when it actually gets some traction and catches on. Because it doesn't take much time to get a powerful effect from it. Well, we're going to put that into the center and build a senior program. And my buddy discovered a new exercise device coming out of California called Biodensity. If you want to read more about Biodensity, you can look it up, www.biodensity, and see what the machine does. But it's an isometric machine. And you do four exercises on it. And it's got a, a, a strain gauge. So as you do your exercise, like the bench press, you start to push as hard as you possibly can. And the needle will go up to show you exactly how much force you're exerting. And this is true of the four exercises that it does. So we started training on the biodensity machine. Now the key to this is that isometrics does not take much time. It takes a serious amount of effort, but it doesn't take much time. We would do each exercise for just five seconds. So that's 20 seconds of exercise, and you could not do it more often than once a week. In fact, sometimes you had to stretch it out for about two weeks because you had not fully recovered. And the increase in strength 
and muscle size was absolutely amazing, dumbfounding. So we did that for about a year, and then there was a conflict within the club and some of the owners of the different companies, and that whole thing got shut down. There's still one here in Philadelphia. I don't know where you would find one in your area, but it's, it's amazing. But I've also found that people who like to work out just can't believe that all it really takes to get as strong and as big as you want five seconds of an exercise every week or two weeks. They just don't buy it. But it's a fact, nonetheless. So they asked me to write a research paper on this, and I did. I wrote a white paper on it for them and collected all the research all the way up till 2006 and that showed all this all the way back into the 50s and 60s. And even in those days, researchers were saying that we've been wasting our time in the gym, hundreds and hundreds of hours and tons and tons of weights were not necessary. You just do isometrics. Now, I settled on that, but I did notice as I was doing it that I was getting stronger and bigger in some areas, but I was losing some muscle size in other areas. So what happens when you do repeated exercises, you do repetitions, that actually works on the volume of the muscle. It increases the size of the muscle because of the delivery of energy and nutrients to it. So there's a, another level of the muscle that's being hit by that type of work. So I recommend both types of training now. And the model for the repetition thing I call the fatigue model. So what's the key here to maximum strength improvement? Turns out it's maximal tension output. And that's what the isometric does. That's what causes the strongest stimulus for a muscle to get stronger and for it to grow. How much tension that muscle can exert. Because if you're doing 10 reps, you're not exerting maximal tension. It just isn't happening. So as you become fatigued by doing the repeated repetitions, say in a barbell curl, by the time you get to the 10, you're exhausted, but you're, you haven't reached maximal tension. Maybe you're only doing 60% of the muscle's capacity to reach maximal tension. So the stimulus won't be that significant. But you do get another training effect out of it. So the, combining both of them is really good. Now, if you go to, and I'll show you this. Let me just move something here. See that door? It's got pulleys on it. And that thing is called the train station. And it's by a company called Lifeline USA. You want to check their products out. They're online. And they make these cables with all these additional attachments. Well, what I discovered, you can buy some cables that give up to 100 pounds of resistance. And by stretching them out in such a way and using some of the different grips, you can actually create a situation where, for example, if you were going to do a barbell curl and you pull the bar up, you can set these in their, terms of their length. So that's it. You get to that point. You can't move it any further. So now you're doing an isometric. So this is a very inexpensive and effective way to add isometric training to your program. So look at Lifeline USA and look at some of the different pieces they have. They have a lot of pieces that you can hook to doors just like that and they have a bar that you can attach cables to. So you can really incorporate some good isometric exercises into your program, even in the convenience of your own home or apartment, that will assist you, particularly if you're pressed for time. Because believe me, you don't have to do any more than about 20 seconds a week of isometrics. And I say believe me, most people won't. Most people who are training won't. But it's fantastic for seniors who aren't exercising and, and don't put much time, want to put much time into it and they want to help maintain their strength. Very, very important. So there you are with information on strength training and muscle building. I'm Dr. Greg Ellis.